You're watching Talk with Audrey. Welcome back. There have been many advancements in healthcare over the years, but there's been little innovation in childbirth since the 1980s. But today, doctors can help women recover and manage pain after a C-section through the use of effective non-opioid options that can greatly reduce and sometimes eliminate the need for opioids to manage pain after surgery. Dr. Elizabeth Chereau is an OBGYN and she joins me today with more. Welcome, Dr. Chereau. Welcome. Thank you so much, Audrey. Appreciate it. So opioids have been the topic of conversation for a few years now. What do expecting moms need to know about C-sections and what happens after they have surgery? No, excellent point. You know, opioids have become a big discussion point, uh, but yet we still have surgery, right? So women uh, have to have that conversation or should be having that conversation. We encourage patients in my practice to start that conversation as early as 36 weeks in the pregnancy. Discuss not only getting to the hospital and where to park or, you know, but really what's going to happen during that surgery and, and most importantly, what's going to happen afterwards and how to help uh, control their pain um, and be able to manage that. So we've been using a long-acting numbing medication in the incision. It's called Exparel. Uh, it's similar to injecting, you know, numbing medication for a, a tooth dental procedure. Uh, and so women have been recovering better and, and faster. Uh, and we've been using, using it since 2016 and it's been opioid minimizing. Well, I had a cesarean and afterwards, I gotta tell you, there was a lot of discomfort. Yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable, right? So the conversation, and, 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 and women, you know, at Axiom Women's Health, we think women deserve more. And the conversation, I, I wish every woman could have had, can have a vaginal delivery, but those that need a C-section should be able to recover just as well as having a vaginal birth. So they should be able to walk better, you know, mobilize, get up to the bathroom, be able to breastfeed, um, be able to um, take care of maybe their, their second or third child, um, right? Or I guess really, you know, the one that they're having as well, they need to be able to breastfeed well. So if, if, if they can do all that, why wouldn't we try and afford that for them? So using the long-acting numbing medication, we've been able to do that. We've re reduced opioids by 87%. Most of the time, I don't even write for a prescription for opioids at all. And patients have really um, been better satisfied with their, their experience. And it's come a long way since a long time ago. Um, so we, we've had a great change, and this is one of them. And if a woman decides to nurse her child, would an opioid pass into the breast milk? Yeah, I mean, imagine, you know, you take a narcotic and you're dizzy or lightheaded or difficult to get up and move or, or even care for your child. Uh, the second part is that it, it does go through the breast milk. So we, we do encourage women to try not to uh, use the opioid um, as long as they're comfortable to be able to choose that Motrin or that, that Tylenol, that, you know, non-narcotic um, pain medication. Some women are, are using really none. Uh, nothing at all. So yes, but you know, pain management has been uh, shown. Um, those that are more comfortable will absolutely have less postpartum depression and, and breastfeed better, and so their newborns do better. And what about the woman that says, "Nope, uh -uh. I want all the meds so I can get to avoid the pain." Yeah, I've had that. No, Audrey, you're absolutely right. I have women who say, oh no, I needed this, that, or the other thing to be able to function. And, and we've been surprised. Uh, I, I will tell you that over since 2016, we've been using this and uh, our pathway is really designed for women to recover better and faster. Um, my, my goal is for women to, to feel good about themselves and about their recovery pathway in their process. So it's not that you can never use one and there are some that use just one, but if you use just one, I, I don't actually have to prescribe that medication for you to go home with because if you only used one, um, technically, you know, real it studies show that you don't really need need even that one um, after surgery to go home with. So, so it's a discussion with patients and I, I encourage everybody to have this discussion and use a shared decision-making um, process that's with the provider as well as the physician uh, and the patient, excuse me. And and uh, we use something called c-sectionpain.com and have patients download a guide, uh, bring that to their provider to really go through in depth why, why uh, an opioid minimizing procedure is the best option for them. As always, be sure to check with your doctor or healthcare provider um, if you're considering non-opioid pain management options. That was some great information, Dr. Chereau. Uh, would you give us that website address one more time, please? Sure, c-sectionpain.com. Thanks so much for joining me. Thanks so much.